This project starts out with a bunch of pallet wood. You don't have to use pallet wood, but it's easy for me to get a hold of and it's cheap. This is going to end up being what I'm going to call a can crate, which is very similar or pretty much the same thing as the beer totes or the can totes that you see a lot of makers on YouTube building. And I love that concept. I'm just going to change it up just a little bit. I've got these broke down into sections of the crate. So these pieces over here are likely going to be the side pieces. And these sections over here are going to be the bottom and the end pieces. First thing I'm going to do is pull out the chop saw or the miter saw, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to cut these down into more manageable pieces. That way I'll get rid of these sections here that have the nails still in them. I don't need to worry about those. And it'll give me a little bit easier pieces of wood to work with when I go to the table saw to clean up some of the edges. In my batch of boards I got a set here that has a pretty good crack and rather than try and bend this open slightly and coarse glue in there, I'm going to make this easy on myself. I'm just going to measure the inside dimensions of this crate. And to make it easy, basically I've got two dividers that are going to go through here, one that goes through there. So I've got some scrap woods that are the same thickness as the dividers. I'm just going to pile them on to the end down here. And take a measurement. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I'd rather have it a little bit loose rather than have it too tight. So the inside of mine, that's an easy one. That's a nine. And for this dimension, I'm just going to use one. And that is six. I've got enough material here to build about three crates. I may end up being able to build more. It just depends on what kind of scraps I've got. If, if you remember, I started out with long, pretty rough boards. And I've cut those down and I've kept them grouped together. So these two pieces came from the same board. Now I'm going to start to group this stuff even further. So I'm going to take these two boards and group them with these two. This will form the sides of one crate. I've also got some of the wider boards that have been cut down to size and they've been kept together so that dimensionally they're similar on the ends. The way this is going to be constructed is we'll have an end piece. It's going to sit on top of the bottom piece and then on each side I will have two of these longer slabs and the height of these will be about to the top of that because that's about where the can sits. Now the dimensions of the side pieces and the bottom piece are going to be the same for each crate set. And to get that measurement what I'm going to do is take my nine inches that I measured previously and then I'm going to add the width of the two sides combined. Okay, so what I've got here now is I've got this dimension here and then I'm going to add nine inches to that.
Where is my pencil when I need it? So on this edge here, everything is flush. These two side pieces and the two end pieces, they're all flush down here. What I'm going to do now is transfer a mark on the inside there. Got this mark, now I'm going to add 9 inches to that. I'm going to cheat 1 inch just so I'm using the marks here. So this will be at 10. So now this is my total length for those side pieces. For this crate. It's important now that I keep these side pieces here with these end pieces so that my measurements aren't off when I put all these together. I can cut those two and those two all at this same dimension. Okay, I've got the side pieces cut and I've just kind of dry fit things together here. I've got the spacer material or the width of the spacers in there and everything looks good. The bottom pieces are going to be the same length as the side pieces. Now that I've got those cut, I can just use that as a reference. Just cut that off. give everything a quick sanding. Not going to worry too much about final appearance because after all it is rustic. Then we'll figure out what we're going to do on handles and start some assembly. I've got things dry fit at this point. Now I have to make some decisions about what my handles are going to be. If I want to do a notch or a cutout in these handles, I want to do that before I assemble them. If my handles are going to be kind of outside of these boards, I can go ahead and assemble this part. Now handles, really, this is where you can get a little bit creative or you can just do it super simple. Again, you could cut some holes in here or just drill a, a hole in here and call it good. You could use some of your scrap cutoffs and trim them down and you basically got a little lip here to, that serves as a handle. For mine, uh, I think I'm going to go with a motorcycle chain on one of them and I will either create handles on the sides or I'll create a handle that basically goes from one end to the other pick it up like so. Another one that I'm going to do is going to have an old climbing rope because one of the recipients of this gift is a climbing buddy of mine. So that's an option. doesn't have to be climbing rope. It can be just any rope. If you don't have motorcycle chains but you like that idea, you can just use any chain that you can find around. That style. That style. Another option that I toyed around with, and if this was a little bigger scale, would be using some of these old motorcycle brake pads. But the scale is a little off. With these, I would simply drill holes, tap them out, and then run bolts through the ends here. Another option I toyed with, but the scale is a little off, is actually using an old clutch lever from a motorcycle. And trimming it down and figuring out a way to secure it on the end of there. So, really there's no rules about handles and you don't need to go out and buy them. Uh, you could even take some flat stock, this happens to be aluminum, but you could also use some galvanized steel or some mild steel, bend a 90 degree angle here and make it tall enough so that you could reach down here. Or if your aluminum stock was thin enough, this stuff is pretty flexible that you may actually be able to just cut it to length giving yourself enough room to make an arch and form a handle like that.
I've got the sections for the dividers cut and I've got them trimmed down. Now I'm not going to glue these, I'm just going to let them sit loosely. And when I put them inside the crate, hopefully everything fits. I'm not going to attach them, they're just going to sit in there like so. That way, when they're done with their beverages, if they want to use this crate for something else, they can pull those out and put them aside. The last stage of this project is to install the handles. You see I built one with handles built in, so that one's ready to go. This one here is going to receive the handle using the old motorcycle chain. I'll pre-drill this and I've got a piece of tape on here to keep me go from going too far.